Meeting call to order. Councilmember Bez Anderson? Here. Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, the Star Ledger on January 22nd, 2024, and posted all the bolts aboard the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. At this time, we have a proclamation declaring February 28, 2024 as Jesse May Ricks Day. Good evening, everyone. This is for you. So I just want to introduce all of you, if you don't know her. This is Mrs. Jessie Mae Ricks. She is a pillar in our community. She is well-loved. She is friendly. And if you piss her off, she's going to let you know about it. <laughs> But she's our, also our official photographer, and we find her to be a friend to all of us. So we have a proclamation here, and it says, whereas the city of Asbury Park takes great pride in its diverse community and values, the contributions of its residents, and whereas Black History Month is an important time to honor and recognize the significant achievements and contributions made by African Americans throughout history. And whereas Miss Jessie Mae Ricks, a prominent member of our community, has dedicated her life to advocating for equality, justice, and education for all. And whereas Jessie Mae Ricks has played a pivotal role in promoting cultural awareness and fostering unity within our city. And whereas it is fitting to commemorate Jessie Mae Ricks and honor her tireless efforts in advancing civil rights and social progress. And whereas the Black History Month event at the Berkeley Oceanfront Hotel in Asbury Park on February 28th, 2024, provides an ideal platform to celebrate Mrs. Jessie Mae Ricks and her remarkable accomplishments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council of the city of Asbury Park do hereby recognize and declare February 28th, 2024, as Mrs. Jessie May Ricks Day in the city of Asbury Park. this for you. Take the microphone. Actually, I am speechless from February 28th up until now. I've always given my best. Don't expect to stand out or be recognized. I just do what I do for the love of the people and for the love of the community. I am a fighter. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to fight for equal rights and justice for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I especially want to thank these folks here who I consider my friends. Mm -hmm. Amy Quinn, we haven't always agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Anderson, same thing, we haven't always agreed. I think we pretty it's much agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Yvonne and I, of course, that's my hangout buddy, as I always say. And everybody knows that I love my mayor. 
<laughs> and I've known him for 30, 40 years. A long time. Yeah, and we haven't always agreed. <laughs> but we respected one another and we all uh, um, shoot for the same thing and that's for the betterment of Asbury Park and all of its residents. So it is indeed an honor to be recognized. I don't like the light to be shined on me. I like to shine light on others. I like to lift others up. I'm not used to being in the spotlight myself, but it doesn't feel too bad. Yeah. <laughs> so again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our new city manager. And as always, I thank my friend, someone I've known forever, and that's Alicia Floyd. And my family is here, if you all would indulge me. I'll ask my family to please stand. Can, can, can you all come forward, please? This is my youngest son, Rasan. This is my oldest son, Corey. That's my daughter, Kali. And this is my best friend, Zania. She's my sister Judy's daughter. And since she was a kid, I've always introduced her as my best friend. That's her sister, Kishana. And that's my little buddy, Andre. And that is my friend, Rob, and my niece, Sandra McLeod. So thank you all for tolerating me. We're now on to special events applications. Good evening, so, Mary Council. Um, the applications before you are all returning with two exceptions, and that's the Drag Day of Visibility Walk, which will be held on May 7th, and the Good Friday Procession, which will be held on Good Friday. Are there any questions on any of the applications? Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're now on to a presentation of Inspire by Somerset of proposed amendments to the proposed redevelopment of Block 4105, Lots 1, 3, and 4, 1209 Ocean, and 115 Fourth Avenue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's say one. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah
Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Michael Bruno, on behalf of Inspired by Somerset. Um, excited to be back in front of you with uh, updated engineered plans uh, and, and a couple modest modifications to the previously approved plan and the plan that you saw and was attached to your subsequent developer's agreement. Uh, ultimately, the changes that we're going to present tonight uh, we'll, we'll be in front of your planning board subsequently. Uh, but we wanted to show you and, and get any amendments we needed to the site development agreement to reflect the changes. The changes primarily result from the plans being engineered for construction drawings. Um, there is a reduction in a number of units from 155 down to 112. That results in very, very modest modifications to the site plan. We're going to show to see you this evening a building by building comparison, virtually imperceptible. The changes, uh, most of the changes are are in the interior, and we're excited about it because it improves the project considerably. We're going to show you those also, so you know what, what they're all about. But uh, our marketing studies and our marketing efforts to date have yielded a desire for more bedrooms. People want more bedrooms. People want to bring their families here. People want to live here full time, I guess because of the dearth of new single family homes that are available for people. Uh, and the fact that people want to be in Asbury Park. I mean, the diversity, the culture, the beauty of Asbury Park. People want to be here year round and that results in a desire for larger units which results in us reducing the number of units to 112. So we want to present that to you. It, it results in, in very small changes that we'll show you, uh, but we think the changes, albeit small, are significant improvements, and we're excited to be in front of you this evening to show you what, what ultimately uh, results from these changes. Uh, we also think that the, the changes are going to allow this project to proceed much more quickly. We think the sales and absorption rate will happen quicker, and we think the, the project will be completed quicker, which I think is the desire of everybody. So with that said, I'd like to introduce Michael Lawson, who is one of the architects who's designed this beautiful project, to kind of walk you through a comparison of what was approved and what the changes look like. Again, they're, they're virtually uh, imperceptible, but we're going to show you those anyway, and then answer any questions you have uh, this evening and, and move forward. Michael? Thank you, Michael. You have both of us here today. Um, my name is Michael Lawson. I'm with Minot Wasco Architects and Planners, and I'm very excited, as, as Michael Bruno said, to be here to present the updates that we have uh, to this fantastic project here in Asbury Park. Um, these improvements really do make a, um, uh, a great difference in terms of marketability for the project, and we're, we're, we're excited to be here. So as we go through, I'm going to share several uh, slides here that show what was approved in 2023 and then what is proposed in 2024. And you can see that many of these are virtually unchanged. They're imperceptible in terms of what we had approved in 2023 and then what we're proposing today. These changes do not change the overall height of the building uh, and Many of them are imperceptible to looking at from one to the next. This is the uh, Fourth Avenue uh, building elevation. Um, this is where the main entry to the building is located. Um, and you can see that, as I said, virtually unchanged. So from what we're just orient us, Michael. The top is what was approved and the bottom one is the, the, the new design. Correct, yep. The top one is what was approved and the bottom is what we're presenting tonight. This is the view uh, along Ocean Avenue. As you can see here, same materials, virtually unchanged. We'll talk a little bit about when we get to the plans, some of the interior modifications that occurred, but that did not affect anything on the outside of the building or the overall massing of the building. It did not affect anything in terms of the ins and outs that we had originally proposed. Um, and as you can see, this is the engineered plan that we're proposing today. And that was the approved site plan that we received in 2023. 
The same thing occurs uh, on the Fifth Avenue uh, building elevation. The only thing here that you will see is, is that there were some extra ventilation um, areas that needed to be accommodated into the building along the Wonder Bar facade that is actually pushed back from Fifth Avenue. And we've masked those with a different colored panel uh, to, to portray that there is uh, orientation uh, and hiding those mechanical uh, ventilation that comes off of that building in that area. And then the uh, Kingsley Street uh, West building elevation, you can see here, um, there's virtually no changes in terms of what we are, are providing uh, to you from what was approved in 2023 to what was what is proposed in 2024. Um, the one thing that I will note, and we'll get to that in one second, is, is that the transformers were relocated to Kingsley based on JCPNL coordination. The utility company said that we had to place them there. That leads us into uh, the building plans. Um, and on the left-hand side, you have the approved 2023 plans. And on the right-hand side, you have the proposed 2024 plans. The main updates here um, that I'll just take you through is one is the transformer relocation that occurred from originally we had the transformers located here. We worked with JCP now. We pushed them to try to keep them there. But unfortunately, they made us move them uh, to Kingsley. Uh, and what you have seen in the past with the elevations is, is we made sure that the ventilation that is required for those transformers works with the original proposed elevations that we had worked with. So there's no change in the amount of fenestration or the articulation of those openings. We, we worked very hard to make that happen. The other note that I wanted to say here was is that we wanted to create a continuous retail. Um, that creates a better plan for Ocean Avenue. And we relocated the beach, uh, the beach alley that we talked a lot about in our original uh, proposal. We actually relocated that to the side of the building. That allows it to have direct access, the same uh, use, the same idea going on there. Um, but it is closer than to the Fifth Avenue and Ocean Avenue uh, intersection for easy and, and pedestrian safety. Um, and does allow us to have then continuous retail along Ocean. Um, which I think is, is much more conducive uh, for the city. Those were the main changes uh, here um, on, the, on the ground floor. We're, we'll go up to uh, the next floor, um, which is the first level of the parking garage. Here, what we have done is we provided a motor court uh, for a, a special arrival uh, to, the pro to the project with no loss of on-street parking. So this drop-off sequence actually happens inside the building. This frees up uh, street traffic for drop-offs, and that, of course, then happens interior of the building rather than outside the building. You don't have people stopping on 4th or 5th Avenue um, you know, to drop things off. They're really going to happen now inside the building. We also finalized the location of the Wonder Bar parking spaces. And those are in a dedicated area, and I, I can show you here. They're in a dedicated area adjacent to the Wonder Bar and with easy access to the staircase right here that leads you straight down and then out to that beach alley that we, that we reconfigured. So it works really quite nicely um, in terms of finalizing how this operates on a day-to-day -day basis. Because we have uh, updated the parking, um, we actually have more parking spaces per unit. Uh, than we had originally proposed. And that's a benefit for the residents as well as making sure that there's a, an appropriate amount of parking for, for this uh, project inside uh, the building. The next few slides are uh, in the base of the building where we have residential units wrapped around the parking garage. And as you can see, there really is virtually no changes here, um, other than um, some demising walls moving based on the unit uh, mix revisions that we've done and Michael uh, Bruno has talked about. There really is virtually no changes to the overall footprint of the building here. <clears throat> One of the things that I did want to note, though, is, is that in this location right here where you see this number seven, we did bump out slightly in this area. It's very, very slight. It allows for a better pedestrian connection within the garage to the North Tower. That is something, it's a very small change, but we wanted to note it in our transparency to, to you all. 
Again, virtually unchanged, the idea and the design intent of the base of the building um, is no different than what we had uh, originally proposed and were approved in 2023. As we go up the building, you will see that the footprints of the towers really are virtually unchanged. Um, the ins and outs of the building, where the uh, proposed balconies are occurring, the depth of those, all of that is the same um, as what we had originally um, been approved of in 2023. As you can see here on the amenity deck, that has been finalized as we've worked through the engineering drawings and worked with the landscape architect. So there might be some modifications there, but the design intent has remained the same. The different uses and amenities are the same as what we testified and presented to you all um, in the planning board in 2023. And as we go up the building, the only thing that you will notice as, as changing here is the unit mix inside the building where the demising walls are located based on our reduction in units. Um, and these, this happens on every single floor um, and essentially the tower footprints and those kinds of things have minor, minor uh, modifications. And on the right of ways, everything is the same with the ins and outs of the building. Again, same, same floor on the sixth, the seventh and eighth. That leads us to our mezzanine, um, which is a permitted uh, a, a additional area on the building per the redevelopment plan. With the revision of the, of the unit mix and the layout, the mezzanine remains fully compliant with the ordinance. There is no net gain in square footage or massing. In fact, the massing has been reduced in overall square footage based on what we had originally had and been approved in 2023. As we get to the rooftop, the rooftop services have been reduced based on the quantity of units. There's less units on the top floor, so therefore we have less private terraces on the rooftop. They are still compliant, um, and the same amenities um, that we had presented earlier apply here. The massing along the right-of-way has remained unchanged as well, as well as the rooftop and how it are, is articulated uh, virtually remains unchanged. So that leads us back to the rendering of the building um, that we're very excited to be presenting to you all tonight. We think that this will be a catalyst for uh, Asbury Park and, and really bring a, a beautiful building uh, to your city. So thank you. Thank you. So our plan would be to uh, make sure the council's agreeable to, to the changes and we hope you see them in the same light we do. Uh, maybe do a, an amendment to the redevelopment agreement to reflect the 155 to 112 units in the new concept plans. And then we'd go back in front of your planning board for an amended site plan as they deem appropriate. And obviously we'll update the financial agreement and the special assessment agreement. We have worked with your assessor briefly on this. You know, this will create more revenue to the city. It's Approximately 9% we're projecting in more in more revenue, so that's a good thing for the city. Um, and so those are those are the kind of tasks that we have to undertake. We're excited to get that behind us so we can we can start on the project in earnest. Our clients here, if you have any questions of them, uh, I know they're really excited about the additions and uh, again happy to be before you and answer any questions you might have. How, excuse me, with these changes, how's the completion date being moved up? I don't understand that. Well, I think, I think from our perspective, we have less units to sell. Uh, okay, okay, that's selling. I'm saying complete, built, coming on rolls, city gets money. Am I still talking 2027? Well, I'll ask our client that, okay. but I, I, think, I, think, I think the concept is to have more units in demand, so the financing to build the project is easier to close and get underway. So the sooner you can get underway with that process, the sooner we can get this complete. And we believe, and I'll let my client speak for, for this issue, that this will, this will enhance that likelihood and expedite things. That's the, one of the goals behind all of these changes. So I think you just answered my next question. Is the financing in place? We have certain financing in place. We still have to close on the construction financing. 
And then I know you're giving more parking than needed for 1.5 per unit, but I mean, they're four bedroom units. And so for anybody to think that somebody's gonna have one car for a four bedroom unit, I think it's like, you know, if none of us know what the council in 2002 thought when they said units. I mean, if you came in with a 10 bed, it's not your fault, I'm just like, <coughs> If somebody came in and said, I'm building a 10 bedroom unit, they would have to provide 1.5 parking spots. So you're building now, you're the first, I believe, to build four bedrooms. So, uh, you know, yes, it's given us extra spaces, but I think those extra spaces are going to be gobbled up quickly by four bedroom units. That may be. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Except, uh, you're going to have your client talk about financing. Our client's happy to come up and... You're going to have your client talk about <coughs> when this is going to start, when it's going to be finished. Ralph, would you like to come up? I just have a quick question. No change in height from no. the previous. <coughs> no, we were, we were not going to dare go in on that <laughs> issue. Idea. Hi, happy to be here. Yes, um, having less units to sell to less people, um, more family oriented, uh, according to our uh, sales team, will enhance and speed up the absorption. Um, typically on a job like this, we've closed on the land, we own it, our financing is a place for where we have to be today. Uh, our financing, you don't um, take your construction loan until you're literally ready to go into the ground to go up. We've, uh, we have um, lenders ready to lend us, but again, it's a, you don't you don't borrow a year uh, before. Now it's about nine months before you tend to break ground. Uh, but we are on schedule and on track and excited to uh, get going. And we've also uh, taken a little bit of a leap of faith and uh, we've actually had our architects uh, prepare the full set of drawings for both scenarios. So uh, we would hope that the, uh, uh, you know, uh, city would like what we're presenting. Either way, uh, we proceed. Um, this would not slow us down one iota. As a matter of fact, we might be slightly ahead uh, with the plans for the 112 units. So you're, you're, if everything went perfect or semi-perfect, finance and everything, your projected starting date and your projected ending date. Uh, projected starting date nine to 12 months and ending date uh, two to three years from then. 2027 or 2028? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's two years, especially since we don't have that much, but when you when I say finish, that means the last uh, uh, hinge has been repaired for the last homeowner. Uh, but uh, we, again, we, we're doing this, this will speed things up. Okay, thank you. Questions? I've got nothing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. We'll talk to your council about what documentation we want to we want to have to memorialize. The change. Well, I think we got to figure out we're yes or no ourselves first. So, and then we'll talk to council. Thank you. Okay. On to matters from City Council, Councilmember Buzz Anderson. Uh, nothing for me. Thank you. Councilmember Chat. Yes, quickly, I'd just like to let everyone know that tickets are on sale for the 2024 Mayor's Rock and Roll for Recreation event, which will um, take place on April 25th, and it raises funds for the city's recreation program. It'll be at the Stone Pony. It'll be lots of fun. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to announce that last weekend's Easter egg extravaganza put on by the city had to be canceled due to inclement weather, but it will be held this Sunday um, in Springwood Park. The time is from 12 to 3, and it's for children 10 and under. So please come out. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Nothing. Mayor Moore? Yeah, this is the most important uh one for everybody. It's more with no E, M O R, 908 489 1887. If you're the one who hit that Powerball and Neptune, uh, please, John Moore, give me a call. I'll be happy to spend it with you. That's it. Thank you, Manners from the city manager. 
That's true. Yeah. yeah. If you're sitting up to it. Build up right there. No, I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll Matters from the city attorney. Nothing at this time. Please. Thank you. We're now on public participation. My motion to open the meeting to the public. Move to open. Second. Second. Thank you all in favor? Aye. Aye. Public participation portion is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone. State your name and address for the record. There will be a three minute time limit for each speaker. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Nancy Sabino and I live at 1000 4th Avenue, the Speedway. This question has to do with the 1201 redevelopment project. And I just want to say that I support the request from last meeting for a re-examination of the vehicular access of Memorial Avenue redevelopment plan to consider having the access on Memorial and 5th as additional vehicle access points to what's now only on 4th. I've lived on 4th Avenue since 2009, and the traffic has already increased in the past 15 years. Cars and non-permitted trucks driving, as we all know, faster than the estimated 25 mile an hour speed limit. While there used to be police cars sitting in front of my house at least once a month giving out speeding tickets, that's not been the case lately. I was told by our transportation director, Bonanno, that enforcement doesn't work to slow traffic. So as we wait for promised raised sidewalks and calming traffic lights further on 4th Avenue, traffic now boldly and flagrantly flies up and down 4th Avenue. Case in point, today I saw two dump trucks, a DPW backhoe, two liquid container trucks, school buses and vans careening midday past my house as I was riding this and tried pulling out of a side street onto 3rd or 4th Avenue, inching out past all the parked cars, practically halfway out onto the avenues, only to see annoyed drivers angry to have to slow down. While these situations are not being addressed adequately now, I can't imagine how the increase of 130 units on 4th Avenue daily will make anything better. It was stated at last meeting that there was a traffic study done to support the decision for locating vehicular access from 4th Avenue. I'd like to know how to get a copy of that study. The study mentioned it was done in 2019, before the pandemic changed everyone's driving habits, and used data from inexplicably 3rd Avenue, not 4th. I believe that a re-examination should at least look at the exact streets in question now and consider alternative options that could better distribute traffic more evenly throughout the three streets that the new development sits on between Memorial 5th and 4th. To recap, more police enforcement now would help to show the residents that the city recognizes in doing something about the speeding cars and overweight trucks on 4th. And I support the re-examination of the vehicular access of Memorial Drive Development Plan to consider Memorial a deemed a collector access street and fifth as additional vehicle, vehicular access points to what now is only on to fourth, a neighborhood street. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get a copy of the? Yeah, sure. Um, I can give you a copy of the NJDOT traffic study and we will be doing more fourth Avenue traffic counts, but I am waiting for more summer months. I don't want to do a traffic count now and then compare it to say, well, there's no cars in December or January, you know? So we'll be doing more traffic counts and evaluating traffic as we go forward as well. And I, I do believe that enforcement of speeding laws does help slow vehicles down. I don't know when we spoke about it, but maybe I was uh, misinterpreted. Yeah. Thank you. Matt Daniels, 1026 Monroe Avenue, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, I could surmise that there is a bit of a wonder as to why uh, we are here, why I am here, uh, and the general, uh, I guess, reason for that. And to that, I would say that there's a cavalcade of reasons uh, that kind of wrap itself into one. Uh, but I'll start by saying it's good to be here and it's good to be able to talk and it's good to be able to discuss. And part of that reason or part of the reasons that we are here, that I am here, is that there uh, is currently a, a situation going on in which the discussion of that situation has been tabooed. 
It's been forbidden. And two weeks ago, we came here and we were able to start the discussion uh, about a ceasefire resolution uh, for, for the current conflict of Palestine and Israel, uh, and as I would refer to it, um, with, with uh, full backing and no doubt, uh, but I won't task you to refer to it as it, as the genocide of Palestine. Um, now, I am very, very happy once again to be able to not only speak to council about it, but to speak to people that are amongst the, are along the ideological spectrum on this. And I know that my colleagues are as well. They are very, very happy to, although obviously under grave and tragic circumstances, able to speak what we know as truth to power. Uh, that is what we're here to do. And I thank people that are here, not even for what I'm here for, just exercising that ability to do so. Um, I know that there are a load of statistics that, you know, I'm sure will be brought up tonight. And uh, I, I task everyone to listen to them. Um, I task everyone to have these conversations openly and honestly, and I thank you all, I thank everyone for being able to do it, Free Palestine. Thank you. Hey, my name is Max Resnick. I'm actually from Millstone, New Jersey, and I'm speaking on behalf of- Could you repeat of, your name? I just couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. Yeah, Max Resnick. Thank you. From Millstone, New Jersey. Thank you. I'm actually speaking on behalf of an Asbury Park resident, Corey Lewin, who couldn't be present tonight. So these are her words, and I fully support and stand by them. I would like to express my support for the city of Asbury Park joining other communities in the state of New Jersey to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Here in Asbury Park, my main mission through community work is to improve the lives of children in our city. Children represent the best in us, the purest in us, and the most helpful in us and their health, security, and well-being is essential to the preservation of every nation. There are so many children in our community who, through no fault of their own, lack the support and resources needed to grow into healthy, happy, and adjusted adults. These are the children who have seemingly been forgotten by so many of us and who suffer as a result of apathy and inaction. However, apathy and inaction does not adequately characterize the root causes of suffering of the people in Gaza the majority of whom are children. They do not just suffer because the American government is doing nothing, they're suffering because this country is playing an active role in their oppression. This country is actively supporting the genocide in Gaza. Clearly, there are geopolitical factors at play far beyond the control of this council. However, it's about time the pressure be applied at all levels of government. If enough municipalities speak up, states will pay attention. And then if, if enough states speak up, the federal government can't conveniently ignore it. There's many ways to participate in an active democracy that many Americans do not take advantage of. I refuse to be someone who accepts defeat and chooses to believe that my voice cannot make a difference. I encourage this council to show the same resolve and courage that the people here are exhibiting to have their voices heard. Speak up for what's right and don't wait for someone else to fix it, just because you think the problem is too big for you. Step up and call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Kimberly Obi. I currently live in Ocean. I am a previous resident of Asbury Park for over seven years. I am a local artist and community organizer. As someone who takes pride in the progressive work of our community, I feel that it is important to extend that work outside of this community. Any information I will be reading is sourced from Dr. Huash, pediatric neurologist and co-founder of Doctors Against Genocide and from accuracy.org Institute for Public Accuracy. I would like to first take some time to talk about Women's History Month. 
While we celebrate here in America, there are 60,000 pregnant women in Gaza and 63 women are killed daily. Just to give you some perspective, that is a busload of women killed daily. 183 women are giving birth every day. Every day these women are giving birth to premature babies with no neonatal ICU and care. Six out of 36 hospitals in Gaza are partially working after being damaged. The doctors and nurses are working under extreme unsanitary conditions with lack of medications. Medical staff are pulling endotracheal tubes from patients who have died, rinsed off and used for another patient. This is an extreme risk of infection and risk of antibiotic resistant infections, which won't just affect Gaza, but will affect all of us all over the world. Let us also not forget that these same children that are being prematurely born are at risk of so many complications but are dying of starvation. The deliberate withholding of essential resources, including food, with the intent of starving the Palestinian population of Gaza constitutes a gross violation of international law, human rights, and the principles of justice and humanity. Article two of the Genocide Convention defines as genocide, Debil deliberately inflicting on a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. The Israeli occupation's deliberate destruction of Palestinian food systems and obstruction of humanitarian aid by Israel clearly fall within the ambit of this definition. If you call yourself a feminist, someone who cares about the human race, you won't stay silent even if it seems minimal. Address these atrocities, because if you choose to do nothing at all, trust me, you will be remembered for it. We do sincerely hope that you, City Council, continue to work with us towards a ceasefire resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Uh, I want to say that <clears throat> the abatements that, I don't know if this party here tonight was going to get an abatement, but I really think that was the wrong address. 1209 Kingsley Street, is, it's on the east side, and uh, that's the wrong address because I was on the other side, and it was the odd numbers, 11, 13, 9. So I, you ought to check that out. But anyway, I wanted to talk about the Black Lives luncheon that we had. I heard it was very nice, and that's good. But I was reviewing some of the bills. All the, everything you bought was from outside the city. I thought we always thought that we should patronize our own businesses here. There was one from Manville. I don't even know where that is. Lebanon was the other one. And I heard the food came from Ewing, which is like an hour and a half away. I, I don't understand that the five of you are sitting up there and preaching about staying in Asbury and patronizing the businesses and you do, you spend a lot of money to promote it, but yet you go and shop out of town and then an hour and a half away. What is that about? And then I want to know how many cell phones are issued in this. Uh, does everybody in this building have a cell phone? I'd like to get an answer to that. Other than that, I want to talk about the abatements. You, I've been reading a lot about them, and there's a lot that you could do. You can promote getting the school board to have a pilot program to take the money from the developer. That you, and I don't think you have anybody reviewing any of these abatements, because if you did, I think you'll find out that nobody's following the rules, and you could take the abatement away from them if you find out that they didn't hire enough people from Asbury Park or other violations, I don't know them all. And the third thing I want to talk about 
is how does Interfaith Neighbors, a building that's one block long, and I don't know how wide, gets away with paying $8,100 in taxes. They have a pilot, but 8,000? Houses on 4th Avenue, some of them have pay 8,000, right, John? I mean, like, I just don't get it. We have to pay them 7,000, it used to be 600 and something, a quarter. For what? We gave them $3 okay. million to Finish start the building. Finish your sentence, you, Rita. Huh? Finish your sentence, your time's up. Okay, I want you to look into the, you have to have a special person looking at all the abatements, all the pilots, because we are okay. getting screwed. Okay. Okay? As far as do all employees have cell phones, the answer is no. No what? No cell phones. All, all employees have cell phones, the answer is no. As far as abatements, we do have a fan two fantastic people that look at the abatements and get us the top dollar. So as far as dollar-wise, and as far as interfaith and the abatements you're talking about, they were all approved by councils 15 to 20 years ago. I and know that. But we can't, we can't unilaterally change a contract. Uh, as far as the food, I, I didn't know they were an hour and a half away, so that's new. Let us look into that and get back to you. It was at the table. Yeah, it was at the table. Yeah, it was at the table. Yeah. I don't think. I don't she think. Had a business here for years. Yes, she did. She, she had, had a restaurant here. Right. Okay, but we'll we'll look at it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alexandra, and I was a resident for uh, Asbury in Asbury did you for work, Alexandra. Uh, what? You're what's your last name? Alexandra Gonzalez. Thank you. And where are you from? Uh, I was in Asbury for eight years. Thank you. Well, where do you live now? Belmar. Bel, thank you. Um, I'm basically here to echo and stand by my pro-Palestinian and Palestinian family and friends and push for a ceasefire resolution and call on your humanity as well as everyone else's here. A genocide is never okay, and if they do it to one of us, they could do it to any of us. This period of time will be written in history, and I would just want Asbury Park to be on that side that's correct and the side of life. And uh, free Palestine and love Palestine. Thank you. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public participation portion is now closed. There is nobody, usually people line up at the microphone, so there's, there's been a motion, there. it's been a second, and you can reopen it. I was literally receiving a message from a Palestinian woman who I wanted to read a reaction to the Palestinian woman. Okay, since you two are the only two complaining, you two can go speak, and then... That is spoke. Pause whatever you want. You, you've been given the opportunity for three minutes. Hello. My name is Allie Geiger Kana. I will give you my address after this. I'm a resident of uh, Northwest Asbury Park. I'm a new resident here in Asbury Park. I've been living here for three years. And um, I chose to live here because I wanted to live somewhere with a history of art and culture. And uh, Asbury Park is a leader in respecting human rights and that's really inspiring to me. And I'm always inspired by the community around here and I thought I could be a part of this. I'm really grateful I moved here. I have built a community around me and I am a very, very lucky person. I'm also a practicing Jew. Um, and uh, every Friday night, we, uh, I told you this last time, we sing Shalom Rav. It is a prayer for peace. And in the Siddur, which is the book you read every Friday night, there's commentary, because you do the same prayers every week. So like, if you get bored, they give you a little something to think about, a little something to chew on, other perspectives. It's nice. And there's an adage I read when I read that prayer, which is, uh, pray as if God is your only option, but act as if you are the only option. 
I am uh, one person. And while I pray for peace, I want hostages to be returned and I am desperate for the end of this barbaric war. I don't know what I'm supposed to do as one person, but I am one person in this larger, wider, vibrant, powerful community. And I moved here on purpose because I believe in Asbury Park. I'm hoping that you'll sign this ceasefire resolution for me and for everyone here who believes in peace and has moved here to live this life. I cannot extend my bubble of art and culture and respect for human life without your help, and that is why I'm asking for you to sign it. As we approach the Passover season, Jews are asked to reflect on like, what is the nature of oppression because uh, Jews were released from uh, Egypt, and that's what Passover celebrates, and so we have to ask ourselves, uh, what is the nature of oppression and injustice? And Asbury Park does a really good job at looking at this and asking ourselves, who are we going to be as a community? There's an adage that's uh, frequently used uh, at Passover Seders about what will you do to fight social injustice going forward? And uh, they want you to donate to usually refugee causes because um, not because refugees are Jews, but because we are Jews and we know what it is to suffer and to experience Injustice, and I am asking you to sign the ceasefire resolution, not in spite of my Judaism, but because of it, because the highest law of Judaism is uh, the preservation of human life and our highest value is to kun alam, which is to heal the world. I was really disappointed at the amount of people here last time from so many other communities representing a Jewish point of view that asked you to hold up this war, which is barbaric and terrible. So many lives have been lost. They're innocent civilians. When I live in my community, I look around and I know they're all innocent civilians. I hate to think what that would be like here. And I'm asking you to extend this bubble of safety and respect. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Andrea Levine. I live in Asbury Park. I can give you my full address um, afterwards. I don't feel safe saying it out loud. I want to wish our Muslim neighbors Ramadan Kareem and Assalamu Alaikum. I'm here on behalf of Jersey Shore Food Not Bombs and Jewish Voice for Peace. I really want to thank you, Deputy Mayor Amy Quinn, for agreeing to meet with us about a resolution. We are here to encourage City Council to continue to move forward and pass a resolution for a permanent ceasefire in Palestine. And we wish for this to happen sooner than later. Israeli Holocaust and genocide scholar and professor Raz Siegel called this a quote, textbook case of genocide on October 16th. Democracy Now! reported on that. We are five months into this and we are still trying to convince people of this fact. As the grandchild of Holocaust survivors, it is my duty to speak out against genocide. I grew up repeating, never again. We heard it all the time but now we must say never again for anyone, never again for any child, and never again even for any soldier that sucked into this war machine. To be clear, every single member of my Grandpa Jack's family, including his first wife and children, were exterminated in Poland. Every family of my Grandma Rose's, um, her first husband, her family, were all exterminated in Poland. So I grew up in a Zionist family, very much understanding and hearing that in order for my own family, for me as a grandchild to have a safe haven, that the need for Israel was the answer to that. So for any Jewish people in the room, I hear you, I understand you, I grew up in, in the same community. Um, I am anti-war and anti-occupation and support the end of the occupation of Palestine. It is out of and not in spite of my own heritage and being a descendant of Holocaust and genocide survivors that I refuse to allow their tragedy and their sheer horrors that happened in, in Poland that they survived to now be weaponized against the Palestinian people. Um, I'm gonna switch now to share a message from um, a local Palestinian woman. These are her words. Israel makes repeated claims which have been systematically discredited that Hamas used hospitals as operation centers. Israel appears to be operating on the premise that if you tell a lie long enough, people will believe it. Israeli soldiers have published footage boasting about the killing of families, mothers, children, the bombing of homes, mosques, and schools. 
mass disappearance and arbitrary detentions, widespread and systematic torture, and inhumane torture. This all adds to the experience of endless death and loss. Again, I will reiterate, I am a practicing Jew. I have been praying for the wounded since October 8th, and sadly, the number keeps rising. So in October, when we were praying for the wounded and the mourn <coughs> and mourning for the death, the number, I think my time's up. We're now up to over 30,000. And I do want to clearly say, when I pray, I also pray for the 1,200 Israelis whose lives were lost on October 7th. And my prayers also extend to the families of the hostages. And I pray for my family who's in Israel. So I want to be clear, as a Jew, I'm praying for the okay, Israelis and, and both sides. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So officially close again? No. All right. yes. Move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public participation portion is now closed. Thank you. We're now on to the minutes. I have the executive meeting minutes and regular meeting minutes of March 13, 2024. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're now on to consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on the consent agenda are presented collectively to the City Council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are considered to be routine in nature and there will be no individual discussion of these items. If discussion is desired by one or more Council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. On consent agenda, we have resolutions 2024-163 through 2024-169, which includes appointments to the Recreation Committee. The appointee is Stephen Wright, with a term to expire January 15, 2025. Do I have a motion for consent? Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chat. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to individual resolutions. I have resolution 2024-170, resolution approving payment of bills. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chat. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Clinton. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-119, resolution authorizing payment to Kivit LLC for marketing services with the made and sold in Asbury Park project. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chat. No. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Abstain. <laughs> Resolution 2024-139, resolution authorizing the execution of a shared services agreement with the Township of Neptune for geese management at Wesley Lake. Move it. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-171, resolution authorizing the purchase of office furniture needed for the police department. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn, what was your answer? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Resolution 2024-172, resolution authorizing the purchase of the vehicle for social services. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-173, resolution authorizing the purchase of 2024 seasonal beach badges. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-174, resolution awarding electronic beach badge system for the city of Asbury Park. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-175, resolution authorizing beach management at Sunset Park. Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Council Chapman. Yes, but I'm just going to say that I'm doing this under duress because I don't feel that this company is the right company. I will say yes because it's better than nothing. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton. <laughs> yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-176, resolution approving change order number three for the new fire department headquarters. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. No. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Clayton. No. Mayor Moore. Yes. 
Resolution 2024-177, resolution authorizing a fertilizer and weed control program at various locations citywide with controlled growth for 2024. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-178, resolution authorizing upgrades to the Asbury Park Police Department surveillance trailer upgrades. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-179, resolution entering into an agreement with Monmouth County to administer the city's community development block grant program. Move it. May I have a second? Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-180, resolution approving a hardship exception to allow for the issuance of a road opening permit relating to certain construction to be undertaken in front of the premises located at 809 Bond Street, also known as 700 First Avenue, Block 2606, Lot 6, within the city. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Can I ask a question? When this road is repaired, is it curb to curb? Yes. It should be, they, yes. Yeah, they're required to completely uh, repave and resurface to the satisfaction of the city engineers. Okay, then yes. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-181, a resolution of the mayor and the city council of the city of Asbury Park to enter into an amendment of a subsequent developer agreement with Asbury Partners LLC and Toll Brothers Asbury Park Urban Renewal LLC to extend the date for the issuance of redevelopment area bonds in connection with the development of property located at Block 3103, Lot 1. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. No. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. No. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-182, supplemental resolution authorizing the issuance of one or more series of additional non-recourse redevelopment area bonds of the City of Asbury Park in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed 6500000 waterfront redevelopment area infrastructure project in connection with a project being undertaken in the City by Toll Brothers Asbury Park Urban Renewal LLC and as a portion of non-recourse redevelopment area bonds of the City previously approved pursuant to a resolution duly adopted by the City Council on February 20th, 2013. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. No. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. No. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-183, Resol resolution adopting the Home Improvement Program manual. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. No. Resolution 2024-184, resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park to enter into an amendment of the subsequent developer agreement with Asbury Partners LLC and 202-204 7th Avenue Urban Renewal LLC to extend the date for the issuance of redevelopment area bonds in connection with the development of property located at Block 4201, Lots 3 and 4. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. No. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-185, supplemental resolution authorizing the issuance of one or more series of additional non-recourse redevelopment area bonds of the City of Asbury Park in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $2 million waterfront redevelopment area infrastructure project in connection with a project being undertaken in the City by 202-204 7th Avenue Urban Renewal LLC, formerly known as 202 7th Avenue LLC, and as a portion of non-recourse redevelopment area bonds of the city previously approved pursuant to a resolution duly adopted by the city council on February 20th, 2013. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson? No. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2024-186, resolution amending resolution 2024-141, which was adopted on February 28th, 2024, establishing fees and regulations for the 2024 beach season. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-187, resolution approving 2022-2023 alcoholic beverage control license for Asbury Music Company Incorporated in the city of Asbury Park, the county of Monmouth, New Jersey. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-188, resolution approving the 2023-2024 alcoholic beverage control license for Asbury Music Company Incorporated in the city of Asbury Park, the county of Monmouth, City, New Jersey. Move it. Second. 
Councilmember Bezin. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-189, resolution to approve a place-to-place -place liquor license transfer expansion of premises from McLoon's Asbury Park LLC, doing business as the Robinson Ale House, the Supper Club, the Iron Wheel Restaurant. Move, Move it. it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Abstain. We're now on to ordinances for introduction of Ordinance 2024-8, Ordinance Amending Chapter 7, Sections 13 and 14 to establish prohibiting parking regulations along Emory Street and 2nd Avenue with a public hearing date of April 10th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to second reading public hearing of ordinances at Ordinance 2024-6. This is Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending and supplementing Chapter 30 entitled Land Development <coughs> Regulations of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, as well as the redevelopment plans for the scattered site stars in Washington Avenue redevelopment area regarding accessory dwelling units. Michelle, uh, Director of Planning and Redevelopment, Michelle Alonzo, will provide a brief overview of this ordinance. Okay, good evening. This is the the accessory dwelling unit ordinance that would permit legal one and two families of record in primarily the R1 but other areas of the city as well to Can you hear? No, I can't hear you. Okay, we'll try again. This is the accessory dwelling unit ordinance that would permit one and two families of record in the R1 district and other areas of the city as the title suggests to have a accessory dwelling unit on the property and it's typically a small structure at the rear of the property it can be a converted garage it could be a new structure but it's different than a two-family or three-family zone in that to have an accessory dwelling unit you must be the principal owner and have an, a legal address as your principal residence at this address. You would not be able to short-term rental the property and that you would be required, which would be is the next ordinance, to have to register the property um, as, a, as a rental. There's also, of course, other bulk restrictions in that you can't exceed the coverage requirements of your district. The accessory structure cannot be more than 20 feet and that it has to um, aesthetically um, comply with the guidelines, the design guidelines for the R1 district. Thank you. May I have a motion to open up the public hearing on Ordinance 2024-6? Move to open. Second. All in favor? Aye. Public hearing on Ordinance 2024-6 is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone. State your name and address, and your comments may be regarding Ordinance 2024-6 only. Okay. Oh. Do they have to have a parking space? Yes. Where, on the property? Yes. And are they going to pay extra taxes? Well, they're going to pay taxes. Yes, I mean, it so yes. I know this question had come up. It will be, it will, <coughs> yes, I'm, going to, I'm not the tax assessor, but of course it, there's going to be a difference of assessment from a one family. Uh, who's going to monitor this? Suppose they do uh, have a family move in, part of the family, and suppose they move out and they put a stranger in there. Who's going to who's going to know it? Well, let me clarify. The accessory dwelling unit can be a family for a family member, but it can also be rented out if it's registered with us. And depending on what portion of the code is violated, it would be the duty of the zoning officer or it may be the duty of code enforcement, depending on which portion is the violation. Well, I think we're asking for more trouble because Alan Hurst just changed all their uh, rentals. They, they're not going to have any rentals in the backyard and they're not going to rent 
for the summer because it is a big problem and you can't control it. You can't control other things. How are you going to control that? I didn't even know that my house on my block, I am the only one family left. The only one. And looking at the voter registration list, I couldn't believe what I heard, what I saw. Apartment one, apartment two. These are all one family houses that nobody knows about. And all of a sudden they're multiple dwellings and nobody says a word. That's the wrong thing to do. You're crowding up the town. Nobody's gonna have a parking space. What if they have two cars, like in my backyard? Then yeah, somebody has to pull out and they have to pull out. It's a, it's a problem. I don't think it helps anybody. You better think about that, because that's a serious problem besides other things that we have here. We don't have anybody overlooking anything. I don't know how my block got to be like that. I thought I was wide awake, but I guess I was sleeping when it happened. No, it's not fair. I didn't pay on to one family house and then everybody else has got an apartment. I, I think it creates a problem. That's on me, made the voice of reason. Thank you. <laughs> Motion to close. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Public hearing and ordinance 2024 6 is now closed. May I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2024 6? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2024-7, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, amending and supplementing Chapter 13, entitled Property Improvement and Neighborhood Preservation, Property Maintenance Code of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, in order to establish a new section thereof entitled Accessory Dwelling Units, ADUs. Um, Michelle, can you provide a brief overview? Yeah, so this is the, the sister ordinance to the zoning ordinance, and this will require a registration and a certificate, and that the property must be the principal residence of the owner and that none of the units can be a short-term rental. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. May I have a, a motion to open the public hearing in ordinance 2024-7? Move to open. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Public hearing in ordinance 2024-7 is now open. Any members of the public who wish to speak, please use the microphone. So what is this ordinance about? This is the companion ordinance to the zoning ordinance for the regulation of accessory dwelling units. It works uh, much like a short the short-term rental in that if you have an accessory dwelling unit that you must register it with code enforcement on an annual basis, give the name of the tenant, and that you need to demonstrate that the, you that you live at the property that it is your primary residence. Well, don't you think you ought to send a notice out about that? Because a lot of people are breaking the rules and you know it. But if nobody gets a notice about anything unless they come here. You have to do better than that. You have to send out a notice to all these people that have rentals. I have, there's one right around the corner from me. Nobody, live, nobody lives in the house. And all they do is rent it for parties every weekend. It's on the corner of 7th and Grand. You can go look at it. Oh, and you're just creating more problems for yourself. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Public hearing on Ordinance 2024-7 is now closed. May I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2024-7? Move to adopt. Is there a second? Second. second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. If no one has anything else, we're on to adjournment. Move to adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone.